You shall not molest or oppress an alien, for you yourselves were once alien. If you ever wrong the widow or the orphan, I will surely hear, says the Lord. In understanding our place in the world, the gospel doesn't use the same language we use in modern times, but it unveils the background of how we came to a Catholic understanding of human rights. God has a special concern, says the Hebrew prophets, for people that in normal society would be considered outsiders. And that's because the people of Israel grew up as outsiders and God intervened to form them as a people. When we try to think through what's our role in the world as Catholic Christians, I think it's important um, to know that we live in a world that speaks really, really clearly of human rights. But many, many times it comes from an individualist sense, from a sense um, of my rights and the vindication of my rights. And it always forgets that that's always in the context of God building a community, of God building the common good, as we like to say. And so when Jesus tells us that everything is held in these two commandments, you shall love God and love your neighbor, his idea of what love means is not an affection of the heart. It's a response to a revelation, a revelation that God calls a people. That people includes those whom society would call strangers. And so God is preoccupied with the alien, the widow, the orphan, the street dweller, the enemy. All of those classes of people that we put outside, God says, are inside. So when I talk about individual rights, human rights, I'm talking about those rights for all people, not just to begin a statement to vindicate some right that I think I'm being denied. Because the foundation of all of this is the principle we call the common good. That we need to create a world where all people can exercise their fundamental rights from a firm an equitable foundation. You know, as we work on campus uh, to be anti-racist, we have to keep that on mind, in mind, that we're trying to build a Niagara, to build communities where all people stand on the same footing and are free to exercise their rights without prejudicing the rights of others. That's hard work. It starts from inside. I have to get a hold of the I that always wants to vindicate its claims and grab hold of it and bracket it. Because if I don't do that, I'm not really building a free society. With one hand, as John the 23rd said, I'm building up the city of God and with the other hand, I'm tearing it down. And in the end, I'll have nothing. So if we want to build a free Niagara, an anti-racist Niagara, an inclusive Niagara, it starts from here. It starts from grabbing hold of what it is that's in me that wants to vindicate my rights to the exclusion of those of others. And when I have a hold of that, when I've eliminated it, when I have a hold on that, then immediately it's time to get to work. Or I could even flip it the other way. Get to work in being anti-racist, but don't forget to do the inner work. In fact, if you start to do the work of societal change and you're paying attention, it ought to prompt something within you. If it doesn't, if it doesn't ask 
me to change, as I work for societal change, I'm probably lying to myself. You know, I'm probably gripped in a little bit of petty narcissism that allows me to think that my human project is done and the only broken human projects are out there. So listen to the word of God and, and do it the way we've been doing it. Start from the outside, but don't forget to go in. Don't forget that the vindication of rights, the inclusion, the full inclusion of those called strangers by society happens when I acknowledge that I'm partly responsible for the continuing situation that says no. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.